to score this many points against Wisconsin are Indiana and Northwestern of all teams. Northwestern beats Wisconsin. That was here, I believe. So, uh, and we mentioned that earlier. That may be a little bit surprising. Indiana, as we say, also scored this many. The Redbirds in some pretty good company when you consider all of the other teams in the Big Ten who were not able to score this many against Wisconsin, either here or at the other Big Ten arena. Well, that, that's true. You, you, when you're only one of three schools that have done that, you've obviously done a, a lot of positives in the course, the course of the ball game. And, boy, I, I'm Dick Astor said it. I wonder if Tony let me fly to plane home. I'm going to roll tonight. <laughs> well, if he does, I don't want to be on it. Hartmill dribbling through traffic. Lost the ball. Muller finds it and gets it to Cooper. And across the timeline goes Coop. And now we're down to 36 seconds to play. And the Redbirds will advance to round three of the NIT. Here's Cartmill driving and passing to Coop. And Antonio puts it on the floor and now loses it out of bounds. <laughs> turnover against Illinois State with 27 seconds to play. The Birds up 77 to 62. Coop just got walloped across the hands there. But doesn't matter, Coop. Orient's all with it to Oki in the corner. Coastal sharing a three. It's not good. Muller up the snare. Another rebound. Dan's done a big job on the board. Does he get the to Rico Hill? We're down to 14 seconds to play. Here's Strotter on the backcourt. The Birds do have to get it across the timeline, and they do now as Muller gets the coop, and his three is not good. And now the tip up there. No. Hill bats it out of bounds with two seconds left. It will belong to who? It'll be Wisconsin Paul. As the Redbirds win the game, the ball inbounded and the shot inside by Oriental is not good at the buzzer and the Birds win 77 to 62 and they go to round three of the NIT where they'll play the green wave of Tulane. How about that? Oh boy, this was fun to watch and fun to be a part of. I'm lucky to be here tonight. And so are many other Redbird fans. There were nine Buffaloes who made the trip from Bloomington Normal. And, of course, a lot of other people finding other ways to get up here to Madison. The Wisconsin fans cheering their players right now. They appreciate a good season by the Badgers. But it's the Redbirds who will play on Wednesday night against the Green Wave of Tulane. And, of course, at this point, we don't know where that game will be. We're thinking there's a chance it'll be at good old Redbird Arena. 77-62, the Birds hold the Badgers here in Madison, Wisconsin. We'll be back with more in one minute on the ISU Redbird Basketball Network. I hear the sound of the unfulfilled who have to wait until the end of the year to get their reward for using a credit card. That's the sound of people with the Shell MasterCard from Chemical Bank. They get a payoff each month. They earn Formula Shell gasoline just by using the Shell MasterCards to buy whatever they want. There's no limit to the amount of gasoline rebates they can earn. Some charges and restrictions apply. Rebates automatically apply to monthly statements. See rebate terms and conditions. The Shell MasterCard from Chemical Bank. When you show your WJBC Gold Card Plus at Merle Pharmacy on Locust Street in Bloomington, you'll receive a 10% discount on any cash prescription purchase. Some restrictions may apply, so check with the pharmacist for details. You can get a WJBC Gold Card Plus if you don't already have one by picking up an application form at Country Leasing on GE Road or at the Backports newsstand in downtown Bloomington. Use it for discounts at our WJBC Gold Card Plus partners. 77 for the Redbirds and 62 for the Wisconsin Badgers and the Birds now go to 22 and 11 Illinois State with twice as many victories as losses after this game. The Badgers finished their season with 17 wins and 15 defeats. The leading scorer unofficially for the Birds, Mo Trotter, with 19, and then three others in double figures. Leroy Watkins has 14, and I wonder if that's uh, a high for Leroy. We'll check that out. 13 for Rico Hill, a dozen for Dan Muller. For uh, Wisconsin, Sam Oakey had 28 points. He was the only Badger player in double figures. They really relied on him, and uh, 28 points is a lot, but I thought the Redbirds defended him well, Bob. Well, it was, it was the way he had to go about getting his 28 points. None of those came easy, and it was a struggle for him. The young man was just absolutely bushed at the end of the game. He was just worn out, and that was the goal. I had talked to... Uh, 
a couple of the coaches the, the other evening, and their, their job was, or they felt that their job tonight was to make life miserable for Oki, making him score in difficult ways. They said he will score. He's, he's strong, he's good, he's mobile, but they said we can't let anybody else go off and hurt us, and I think they accomplished that goal. The uh, career high for Leroy Watkins, which means his season high, because this is his first season, of course, for the Birds, even though he's a sophomore, 15 points against uh, Virginia Commonwealth. So he fell one short of that this evening, but what a great game for Leroy and for all of the Redbirds who knocked off the Badgers here in Madison, 77-62. to And now it's on to the quarterfinals of the NIT for only the third time in the school's history, first time in nine years. The other time it happened again was 19 years ago when the Redbirds had to win only one game to get to the quarterfinals. So really at this point you would call it uh, the second most successful or among the two most successful NIT appearances ever for the Redbirds and they have a chance to make it the best ever if they can climb one more ladder here and go to New York. Well, I think the thing that's probably most encouraging to me is that I feel that we're playing our best basketball at this point in time. And I, and I want to go back to a year ago when we were also in the NIT and got beat in the second round but played a tremendous game. We were playing our best basketball then also. The staff does a tremendous job of getting their ball team ready at the right times, and this is when you need to be doing it. They, they needed a little break after that conference tournament to regroup and get some fresh legs. They did it, but in the process of doing it, they, they kept the players focused and wanting to go farther than they had before. So, Dick, I, hats off to the staff. They have done a fantastic job. We will talk with, uh, of course, head coach Kevin Stalling. And we expect that one of the players will be able to get up here as well, although it'll take a little while. We're way up on top here at the Wisconsin Fieldhouse, where the Redbirds did it to the Badgers, 77-62. to Stay tuned. Now post-game coverage comes your way next on the ISU Redbird Basketball Network. ISU Basketball. Here's Paul. A shot fake, and he picks it up with three to shoot. He scores. This play-by-play -play action has been brought to you by Country Companies Insurance, by Feeney Oil Company and your Central Illinois Shell Dealers, by First National Bank, by Rayjack Distributing and Miller Lite, by Heller Ford Mercury in El Paso and Heller Lincoln Mercury in Pontiac. Stay tuned. Post-game coverage is up next on the ISU Sports Flagship, AM 1230 WJBC. Why do people choose First National Bank? Probably for a lot of different reasons. Robert Luke of Bloomington shares some of his. We chose the First National Bank for our banking uh, because we were acquaintances with Dick Barkley, the president, for many years, and he and his team of people were extremely helpful, and they've been very helpful now for almost 15 years. I think the best thing that we uh, experienced with the First National Bank is the personal service, if we need something, it's a phone call away, both for business and personal purposes. We have accounts uh, for our business, personal accounts, escrow accounts, mortgage accounts, loans, you name it. I think the First National Bank is a wonderful bank, and it still has the flavor of being a local bank. Everything's done here in Bloomington Normal. For all your banking needs, First National Bank, 1702 Eastland Drive and 1401 South Main, Bloomington, and in Saybrook at Center and Union. Member FDIC. This post-game coverage of ISU basketball is brought to you by the Alamo 2, by University Liquors, by Schooners, by Maitland Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical, by Everin Securities, by Bank One, by Diamond Vogel Paints, by Denison Youth Car Center, and by Denison Toyota. You're listening to the birds on the ISU Sports Flagship, AM 1230, WJBC. We are back at Madison, Wisconsin, where ISU's Redbirds have advanced to the quarterfinals of the NIT with a NIT road victory here over the Badgers of Wisconsin. 77 to 62, the final score. 19 points for Mo Trotter, 14 for Leroy Watkins, and Leroy also snared seven rebounds, and he'll be our post-game player guest. We'll also, of course, talk with Kevin Stallings about uh, a very historic victory for Illinois State. First ever in a Big Ten arena. The Birds beat to Iowa on a neutral floor, but uh, have never won in a Big Ten arena the first time it's happened. They've had chances to do so at Illinois and uh, at uh, Northwestern, 
but have not been able to come through. They did here this evening. Stay tuned. Leroy Watkins next up on the postgame show as the Birds win 77-62 over Wisconsin. We return in two minutes on the ISU Redbird Basketball Network. If you have a question, can you suggest a good dark microbrew? University Liquors has the answer. What's a tasty after-dinner dessert type drink that's easy to fit? At University Liquors, their staff is knowledgeable. So even on questions that have no right or wrong answer. Solely or absolute. Which one should I stock in my bar? They can still offer an insightful opinion. Is Weiss beer always served with lemon? They know the answers to the questions because University Liquors is a full-service store. What's the difference between champagne and sparkling wine? They carry a super selection of spirits, from fine wines to normal's largest assortment of imported beer and microbrews. How much should a fine bottle of cognac cost? And University Liquors are experts when it comes to catering or party planning. Is there any way to serve 200 people and not go over my budget? So whether you're looking for a good selection and a fair price... What else goes with Chinese food besides plum wine or sake? Or just have a question. Are long necks on sale? You'll find what you're looking for at University Liquors, conveniently located at the corner of Hubert and University in Normal. Where's your margarita mix? Amazing! Diamond Vogel Paints is giving roller covers away free. Diamond Vogel knows you need quality tools for a quality paint job. So during Diamond Vogel's March paint sale, they'll give you a free roller cover with every gallon of interior paint that you buy on sale. You save on the paint and get the roller cover free. Wow! Don't need a roller cover? Then choose from other free items. And while you're in the store, check out the savings on wallpaper and window blinds. Hurry! Sale ends March 23rd. Start your spring decorating now with Diamond and Vogel's extensive selection of borders and wall coverings. Through the 23rd, all in-stock wall coverings are 20% off the everyday discount price. Plus, save 30 to 50% on all special order wall coverings. Buying a new home? See Diamond Vogel for a price on blinds, verticals, and soft shades, as well as paint and wallpaper. If you don't have the time to look through the books, or you think you don't have the creativity, Diamond Vogel can do it for you from start to finish. The ideas, the measuring, the estimating, the setup, and help you find installation. Diamond Vogel Paints, 1110 East Oakland, Bloomington. Illinois State 77 and Wisconsin 62, and the Birds take a 22 and 11 record into round three of the NIT. And one of the reasons why, Leroy Watkins, 14 points, seven rebounds unofficially. Leroy, congratulations, great ball game. Thanks. What, uh, what was the key to you guys winning this game tonight, do you feel? Uh, just playing great defense, getting it inside. He wanted the big men just work work hard at getting getting position down low. And you were able to do that and were able to shoot the ball very, very well, despite the fact that your left wrist uh, has some torn ligaments in there. Uh, that apparently doesn't hurt your shooting very much. No, it, it, for some reason, it seems like it's not helpful because I've been wearing this tape. and It just, it just helped me on the line, too, I think. It's not bothering you out there? No. Nah, once, once I get it loose as, in, um, in um, pre-practice, uh, it just, it just, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm all right and once it, I get it loose. In fact, you're suggesting maybe that tape is helping you, huh? Yeah. Maybe, uh, even after it heals, next year you're going to put some tape on that wrist, are you? Yeah, I might. <laughs> just to help me out. Uh, from the free throw line, six out of seven. And, of course, uh, you're not the best free thrower <laughs> in the Missouri Valley, but uh, you could have been tonight. What was the difference there? Well, I've been working, I've, Coach Rich has been working with me pretty hard on getting my free throws down, and I've just been working hard on my own, just shooting my free throws, and it paid off tonight. Leroy, you guys basically dominated the rebounds tonight. You hit the boards hard, and it was kind of a collective effort, I think, but you guys did a tremendous job on that. Was that obviously something that's been worked on and discussed coming into the game? Yeah, because he said that their big men were pretty strong, and, um, Hitting the, uh, hitting the offensive rebounds and the defensive rebounds would be a key factor in the game. Well, also, it seemed as if they defended yourself, Rico, and whomever we had at the post. They played directly behind you, which we were able to feed the post pretty good, and then we hurt them from there. Yeah, because what we thought, they were going to front the post the whole game, and then we got we got pretty good, good position getting them behind us, and we were able to um, score when we got the opportunity. Now, I'm talking like an old point guard here to a postman. They got you the ball, didn't they? Yeah, they that got helped. it. They, yeah. That makes you work a little harder knowing they're going to give it up, too. Yeah. We remind you that our post-game player interview here with Leroy Watkins is brought to you by Don and Doug Sutton, your REMAX Twin City Realtors. I know you guys are charged up for any game you go into, Leroy, but was there a little extra charge because you're playing in a Big Ten arena? Yeah, just a little bit. Playing the Big Ten, we, we in the Missouri Valley. 
a lot of people don't give us the recognition that we should get, and we, I think we proved it today. Absolutely, with a 77-62 to 62 win over the Wisconsin Badgers, now it's on to round three of the NIT, and you've heard that Tulane has defeated Minnesota, but I guess at this point, uh, you don't care who you play. You know whoever you play is going to be pretty tough. Right, right. We just want to go to New York. And we're ready to go to New York now. One more victory to get there. Yep. Rico, I'm going to try to tap into a, a team secret here. What was the focus after the ball game in the locker room? What did the coaches say that your focus needs to be at this point in time? Um, just being poised, aggressive and confident, and ready to get ready to play. No matter who the opponent was, now we know it's Tulane, but that's what we got to look forward to is taking on the green wave. And we got, what, one day between now and game time, we're going to have to do a, it's like cramming for an exam, right? Yep. Well, I think, we, I think we're going to be ready. This is a, this is a um, good matchup for us. I think we're going to be ready to play. Yeah, we know you are, Leroy, and we hope that game will be at Redbird Arena. Uh, it could go to New Orleans, of course, but uh, I think you guys have a chance to host it, and I know that would make a difference for you guys. Yeah, I think it would, too, but we're, we, we proved that we can play on the road, too, so that, that helps us because we're a good road team. So I think where, wherever it's going to be played, I think we, we have a good chance. That's one of those things we just don't have control over, is it? Right. So we can't waste time worrying about it. Right. Well, Leroy, congratulations. A great uh, offensive and defensive effort. Thanks. And uh, we hope that wrist feels better soon, but it probably will require surgery, it appears, after the season is over. Huh? Yeah. Victories like this make it feel a lot better, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, nice going. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Congratulations. Leroy Watkins, our player guest, and again, our post-game player interview brought to you by Don and Doug Sutton, your REMAX Twin City Realtors. We'll talk with Kevin Stallings, of course, a little bit later on. We'll check the other scores. They're all final now in the NIT. We have some uh, NBA information to pass along to you. The Bulls did pull out that victory at Philadelphia. More on that here coming up. And we'll also check this game statistically as the Birds get it done here at Wisconsin. 77-62, the final score. We'll be back with more post-game information in two minutes on the ISU Redbird Basketball Network. Penny on the 17th green. Mr. Bob Meir is going for birdie and the lead. He looks down, his mind totally focused on this putt. Hmm, why am I paying so much interest on my credit cards? Is a home equity loan really smart for me? And what about a personal loan? Yeah, what about the bill for Lowry's braces? If you can't get questions about loans off your mind, relax. Bank One has answers. Let's talk. A few minutes with your personal banker, one-to-one, -one, and you'll have all the help you need to find what you need a smarter loan, and maybe the time to think about more important things. Mr. Mir is still lining up the pot. Amazing concentration. Bank One. Whatever it takes. Member FDIC. Equal housing opportunity lender. Loan subject to credit approval. Consult your tax advisor regarding the deductibility of interest. For smart loans, call 1-800-56-LOAN-1. In our homes and in our businesses, we expect things to run smoothly. But what happens when they don't? Who do you call if the furnace or air conditioner goes out? If the sump pump stops working? Or there's a plumbing or electrical problem? You could call a Mr. Fix-It, but what are you getting? There's really only one name you need to remember. Maitland's. Maitland's is ready to take care of any of those problems for your home or your business because they are your total service center. From heating and cooling systems and service, plumbing and electrical service, home inspections for buyers or sellers, electronic air filters, humidification systems, carbon monoxide detectors, and sump pumps, the only name you need to remember is Maitland's. Maitland's also has service contracts available and 24-hour emergency service. To keep everything running smoothly at home and at work, depend on Maitland's at 3005 Gill Street in Bloomington or call Maitland's at 828-7624. Redbird 77, Wisconsin 62, and Kevin Stalling's team is headed to the quarterfinal round of the NIT. Coach, congratulations. Well, Dick, thank you. Um, I know I say this a lot, but I could not be prouder of our players. Um, that was an unbelievable performance to come in here and play a team that uh, obviously it's very good and, and we our guys just played their hearts out and played well offensively, played well defensively, played well on the backboard and 
uh, it was just a tremendous, tremendous effort by every single player we had. And uh, I don't want to go any further without saying this. There were about nine busloads of people that had a whole bunch of fun tonight. Yep. And we really appreciated their presence. We appreciated they they actually made some noise in here. I think we were we were outnumbered about 10,000 to 1,000, but uh, we actually had some action going in here for the, from the Illinois State people. And we appreciate the heck out of them making the trip up here and, and being interested enough and, and supportive enough of our program to to come up here on a weeknight and, and make the kind of noise they did. They did generate some noise, but that's because you guys gave them reason to. What a, what a great performance. Was it your best game of the year, do you think? Well, it, it certainly wasn't the worst. Um, <laughs> we, we've, uh, I don't know if we've played better, but um, it was it was very very good from start to finish. The second half was unbelievable. We we really accomplished it. It's kind of amazing. You, you throw together a game plan, and you say, well, we think this will work, and we think that will work, and this is what we need to do. And tonight was just one of those nights where the kids went out and executed it perfectly, and it worked out perfectly. We, we wanted to extend the floor, create as many possessions in the game as we possibly could, and, and really try to wear them down. And I thought that showed late in the second half. I thought we were able to wear them down, take the legs out from under them a little bit. And, and you know, we just had some great performances. Uh, Mo was really good. Leroy was outstanding. Jamar was, uh, you know, he was great too. We, we just had a number of, of really, really solid performances from guys. And uh, like I said, I just couldn't be prouder of their effort and prouder of their composure. This was not an easy environment, which you could tell. In the second half, we really took the crowd out of the game. but. This is a difficult environment to play in, and uh, we're just happy to get out of here with win. Kevin, I know one thing you guys were attempting to do at the onset of the ball game was to be aggressive at all times, offensively also. And I thought you guys accomplished that goal. You never backed down. You never saw a point. I thought where the birds looked tentative, they were always attacking and, and executing with, with great poise. Well, I, we, we talked about before the game, and I think I mentioned this to Dick in the, in the pregame show, we talked about playing aggressive, we talked about playing with poise and playing with confidence, and we felt like if we could go do those three things, that everything else would take care of itself, and uh, we were able to obviously accomplish that, and, and they play great team defense, Wisconsin does, and, and Jamar was really able to handle the ball. They, they have a guard, uh, Ariano can put as much pressure on the basketball as, as any player that we've seen in my three years at Illinois State. I mean, it, this guy, is a, a, a champion handball player, from what I understand, from uh, from Canada. And he, he's got great feet and great hands, and he's really quick and strong, and he can really get a lot of pressure on the ball. And Jamar just did a terrific job of, of moving the ball up the floor at the pace that we needed to play at to be successful. And, you know, he, he's playing with a back that is so bad that uh, I haven't even been able to practice him. And uh, I, I feel really badly for him because... He's probably not going to be able to walk tomorrow. He, he's going to have a hard time getting out of bed, and, and we'll be lucky if we even have him for Wednesday night. Well, Coach, Gary has volunteered to go to class for him tomorrow, and I don't know if that's going to be very positive, but he tells Jamar to take a day off. Well, I tell you, Jamar will make it to class because he knows I'll break his back if he doesn't go to class. But, uh, <laughs> other than that, um, it was just, we, we played the game at the tempo that we need to play at, and, and, and we, we've done that two games in a row now, and it's shown that that's the way we need to play to, to be successful. Now, like I said, we've got a, we've got a tall order Wednesday night, but um, again, we're just happy to still be playing. One thing that was, you know, that all of us have, were fortunate enough to follow you last year into the postseason, and we're seeing again this year, you guys play your best basketball this time of year. Well... You know, I'd like to say that's coaching, but sometimes I think that's coincidence. I've been on a, I've been assistant coach at a number of on a on a number of teams that that just fizzled at the end of the season, and you never know why it happens. You never know what caused it to happen. But um, we we just we're playing good basketball right now. This is, this is two games in a row where we've really played uh, fairly close to our potential, and you know we we thought it would happen like this. We thought that our guys would come together this way, and and. Uh, we thought that we could be pretty good at the end, and, and lo and behold, here we are, and you know, hopefully we're pretty good. We're going to need to be Wednesday night, I can tell you. Defensively, Kevin, you started in the man-to-man. -man. That was very effective, and then you switched to the zone, and that was effective, too, but why the switch? Well, I talked to a buddy of mine at Purdue, and uh, Bruce Weber, a guy that I worked with and, and, and remained very close friends with, and he said that he thought in the second half, when they went to the zone, 
They came up here and, and, and played Wisconsin and, and won by 30, but uh, they went to the zone midway through the second half and it really were able to make a spurt because Wisconsin sort of stagnated against it. So I wanted to give it a try if we were in that kind of situation. And we were fortunate because their shooters didn't, they didn't make the shots that they were able to get, but we really did a good job in the zone. You know, again, man-to-man is what we do, it's what we believe in, but uh, Bruce just told me that he that they had some success doing it. I, we were having a hard time stopping Oki, and I just figured it was a good time for us to give the zone a try, and, and it ended up being really effective for us. And then when you went back to the man, perhaps the play of the ball game, when uh, Hansel made the steal and then got the ball to Moe for what turned out to be a three-point play. Yeah, that was, uh, the game seemed to still be in balance there, uh, but Steve Hansel's a great defender, and, and uh, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what he what he means to our basketball team and what it, what it has meant to us not to have him because we're just a completely different basketball team with him in the rotation. Um, he made a great play, got the ball to Mo, and Mo went down and finished the layup and got fouled. And, and then, like you said, that was probably the turning point in the game. Well, it's round three of the NIT, game number 34 of uh, what getting to be a long season. We hope it goes on for another three games, but first things first, Tulane's Green Wave, as you know, knocked off Minnesota in Minneapolis by 19. Obviously, they're playing some pretty good ball. Well, they must not be very good if they can only win by 19 at Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota thought they should have been in the NCAA tournament, and uh, I said before this thing started that Tulane was, was the best team that, that I felt like didn't get to the NCAA tournament. A year ago, it was Virginia Tech, and Virginia Tech won the thing, and um, we're going to have our hands full. They, you know, Cincinnati had to make a, a great play at the end of the game to beat Tulane a couple weeks ago. So we know what Cincinnati did to us, and we know what Cincinnati can do. Um, we're we're going to be a little overmatched physically, but I'll tell you what, those guys that go out there, and, and, and you know how they are, they'll go out and play, and they'll believe that, that we can get it done. And... Uh, who knows, if it's close to the end, you never know what might happen. Do you have uh, very much hope that the game could be at Redbird Arena? Well, I certainly have some hope because um, Tulane's arena only seats 3,600, and we could blow our nose and draw that many, so um, ho hopefully hopefully we'll, we'll get the home game, and if we do, Boy, oh boy, would I like to see the arena packed. But again, I, I want to go back to those people that made the trip up here tonight. That was It was unbelievable. Our team... When we were leaving the floor before the game started, with about 10 minutes to go before the game started, I heard this unbelievable ovation. And I, I was kind of panicked because I didn't know what it was. And I looked up in the stands way up, I mean way up in the rafters. For, for those of you that aren't here tonight, <laughs> this, this place goes straight up. I'm, I'm getting, getting sick right now just looking down. But I looked way up in the rafters and there's this entire section of Illinois State people making this tremendous roar and they were cheering for our guys going off the floor and I, I was like I said I was sort of dumbfounded because I, I, I just didn't know where the roar was coming from I didn't know what it was about but our fans were, were absolutely terrific but if we are able to get a home game uh, I, I have a lot of confidence that we would probably see a pretty good crowd and maybe one that would, would make a lot of noise and uh, try, try to give us the help we needed to, to beat Tulane. Well, after the first ever Illinois State win in a Big Ten arena, uh, I would think that might that might uh, create a little bit of interest in your next ball game. And that next ball game coming up in a hurry. You mentioned Jamar's physical status. You are pretty concerned about what he might be able to do for you Wednesday night. It sounds like. Yeah, Jamar is just. I mean, he is just such a tough, tough, tough kid. And I tried to take him out periodically through the first half, and we got into the second half, and he just said, Coach. If you take me out and you leave me out too long, I'm just going to get stiff, and that's going to make it worse. And I said, Jamar, at the rate you're going, you're not going to be able to walk tomorrow. And he said, well, Coach, we'll worry about that tomorrow. So he, he's just a, I mean, he's a terrific kid and just an unbelievable competitor, and he's probably the toughest kid that I've ever coached. He's just a, a, a great, great kid and a great competitor and, and obviously the heart and soul of our basketball team. And, uh, the, the major reason why we won tonight. Well, hopefully he will be able to uh, answer the call on Wednesday. In the meantime, Kevin, we anticipate that one, and we congratulate you again on uh, providing all of the Redbird fans who are here with a delightful evening. Okay, Dick, thanks a lot. Kevin Stallings of ISU's Redbirds, whose team wins it here at Wisconsin, 77-62. to 62.
Okay, we'll take another two-minute break here, and then we'll come back and check those other scores and the stats from this game as we continue our post-game coverage here from Madison, Wisconsin, in two minutes on the ISU Redbird Basketball Network. Denison Youth Money Back Guarantee. Bob Denison Used Car Center, 1103 South Morrissey, just south of Lakeside Country Club. The LMO2 in downtown Normal is backing the birds with the introduction of a new line of ISU Redbird apparel from Jansport. In cooperation with Jansport, ISU Athletic Department has created a new ISU Redbird mascot in addition to the traditional Reggie Redbird mascot you've come to know. You'll find Jansport's new ISU mascot on a new line of hats, bags, t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, sweatshirts, and polos. Of course, each piece is a quality apparel item you'll be proud to wear to any ISU function as well as at casual times. You'll find the new Jansport ISU apparel on sale at the Alamo 2 on North Street in downtown Normal and at the east end of Redbird Arena at all ISU games. Be among the first to add these new ISU apparel items to your collection by stopping by the Alamo 2 or pick up your new Jansport apparel when you attend a Redbird game at Redbird Arena. Look for the Alamo 2 display on the east end of Redbird Arena. Show your spirit with the new Jansport ISU apparel from the Alamo 2, backing the birds on North Street in downtown Normal. The Redbirds victorious by the score of 77 to 62. Let's go to the scoreboard first. We'll check the uh, other NIC games. They are all final now. It is Tulane knocking off Minnesota 84 to 65. So Tulane and the Redbirds will play either in New Orleans or at Redbird Arena. And we're rather optimistic about ISU's chances to host that ball game because of the size of Tulane's home facility. It seats only 3,600. Alabama crunched Missouri. 72 to 49. The Crimson Tide will take on South Carolina next. The uh, Gamecocks knocking off Vanderbilt 80 to 70. In the NBA, the Bulls were down two at the half, down two after three quarters, but they wind up winning by four at Philadelphia, 98 to 94. Denver 122 to 114 over Toronto in Toronto and uh, these two games are just into the fourth period with San Antonio leading at home over Golden State 92-79 and Utah on top of Milwaukee 81 to 65 that's also just starting the fourth period the Redbirds for the game make 26 of 55 so they shoot just under 50 percent 47 percent from the field 38 percent from the field for Wisconsin's Badgers. From three-point territory, Birds six for 17, the Badgers four for 18, so the Birds defended the arc very well, and they rebounded extremely well. 40 to 32 advantage on the boards for the Redbirds uh, in this game, Bob. Well, Dick, uh, you know, we talked about Temple being one of the major major keys to the ball game, and you can't, cannot control the Temple game without the basketball, and right there, rebounding is how you get the basketball. They, they, they did a tremendous job in just about every aspect that you had to. And, and, you know, credit goes to them. The Redbirds just flat outplayed the Badgers of Wisconsin tonight. Turnovers 14 against the Birds, a dozen against Wisconsin. Gary says only four of those turnovers, four of those 14 against the Birds occurred in the second half. That's, that's, that's pretty remarkable. That, that is, because that was when they made their run. That's when they threw the pressure at us. That's when the pressure was on us. And, and we responded to all of those. And, and that's what you got to do when it comes time to win the big games. And we did it, and we did it with class. Individually, it was 19 points for Mo Trotter, 15 for Rico Hill. I think I said 13 earlier. I missed the basket for Rico. He scores 15, and then Leroy Watkins with 14, and then a dozen for Dan Muller. Eight points for Steve Hansel, who played a big game off the bench. 17 minutes for Steve. He was three for five from the field and had eight points and a couple of assists. Four points for Jamar Smiley, who had seven assists in this game. Three points for Antonio Cooper, and two for Kenny Wright. Rebounding, Rico Hill with 11, and Dan Muller with 10 to go along with Leroy Watkins, seven boards. And the Birds win at 77-62 over Wisconsin's Badgers. Now, we will take care of a couple more items here when we come back. We'll talk about the Redbirds' estimated time of arrival at the Bloomington Normal Airport. It will be a rather rough estimate, but we'll try to give you an idea in case you're uh, inclined to go out there and welcome them home. And then we'll talk about the next round of the NIT. We'll do all of that in two minutes here, but first let's pause for this on the ISU Redbird Basketball Network. 
Kemper Securities is now Everin Securities. And although the name has changed, the quality and professionalism you've come to expect remains the same. At Everin Securities, they've taken 90 years of investment experience and created an independent, employee-owned investment securities firm with nearly 150 offices in 27 states. Everin Securities offers an entrepreneurial spirit, and Everin takes pride in their dedication to intense personal service. At Everin Securities, they know the better you do, the better they'll do. Everin Securities, a vested interest in your success. For more information about Everin Securities, call 662-8575. That number again is 662-8575. Or visit Everin Securities, conveniently located at 1408 East Empire near Pizza Hut. Everin Securities is a member of the New York Stock Exchange and the Securities Investor Protection Corporation. If he makes this first free throw red, he'll tie the game. And if he makes the next one, that means they'll take the lead. But you have to make the first in the one-in-one in, one in order to get the second. Good point and good math. You see, professional play-by-play -play broadcasters understand the need for practical, everyday math. And so it is at Schooners. You see, at Schooners, they have a live-in accountant, Richie. Richie has taken advanced level math courses, and he's helped Bob and Mike develop and enforce a policy of charging you only... That'll be $6.95 plus $4.95 plus $1.85. That'll be $13.75. What you pay for. And don't forget the onion rings. And don't worry, because if you order them, they won't forget to charge you. Schooners, willing to crunch the numbers and make the tough calls on East Grove in Bloomington. 77-62, the birds thump Wisconsin here in Madison, Wisconsin. The Redbirds took the lead for good in the first half when somebody hit a three to put them up 23-21. to They never trailed after that. They were only up by two at the half, and then they scored the first uh, four points of the second half to go up six, and I think Wisconsin climbed back to within two, perhaps a time or two after that, but then the, the birds extended the lead as the half wore on. They led by uh, as many as 17 and won it by 15, 77 to 62 over the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, I believe Gary Walter has some information for us regarding tickets for the third round NIT game. Gary, what do you, what do you know? I'm running up those stairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kenny, just, Kenny Mawson just gave me this ticket plan stick and it'll only be good if uh, the birds host the game Wednesday uh, night. And uh, they should know in the next hour they think they're in a conference call now so we'll uh, when we do know of course we'll pass it along to as many of the network stations as we can and uh, so stay tuned to this station to find out whether the birds will host a round three game a quarter final round game in the NIT on Wednesday night but here's the plan for tickets in case the Redbirds host a third round game they go on sale at eight o'clock tomorrow morning from the ticket office at Redbird Arena. Tickets 12 bucks for the general public and $4 for ISU students as they were for the game last week against Mount St. Mary's. Season ticket holders will have until 8 o'clock tomorrow evening to claim their same seat locations. Okay, again, tickets on sale at 8 tomorrow morning if the Redbirds host in the third round and we're kind of thinking they might, but we don't know for sure yet. We hope to know here within an hour or so Season ticket holders have until 8 o'clock tomorrow evening in order to claim their same seat locations. And again, the price is 12 bucks for the general public, $4 if you happen to be an ISU student. The ticket office phone number, if you need more information, 438-8000 at 438-8000. And uh, the area code, of course, is 309. And again, we should know in about an hour, and uh, you'll hear it here on this station when we do know whether the Rippers will host or whether they're headed to New Orleans for a game on Wednesday night. Meanwhile, the Rippers are expected to arrive home if you're among those tuned in on our flagship station WJBC in Bloomington. Perhaps you want to go out and welcome them home. Uh, estimated time of arrival about 11 o'clock or so. It's a pretty quick flight from here. They should be off the ground in uh, perhaps about 25 minutes or so and the flight takes around an hour, maybe even a little bit less. And so if all goes as planned, which of course uh, 
doesn't always happen, but if it does happen in this instance, Bob, they'll be home about 11 or so. It'd be nice to have some people welcome them home. Well, it's, it's, it's always nice to have somebody welcome you home, but they deserve it tonight. What a, what a tremendous performance. What a great win for Illinois State Athletics. And, and this group of guys right now, as we've discussed already here repeatedly, they're playing great basketball. It couldn't happen to a better group of kids. It couldn't happen to a finer group of coaches. They're playing great basketball. The community needs to come out in masses Wednesday night and show their support. Well, we hope that'll be the case. We hope that there is a game to attend on Wednesday night at Redford Arena. And again, we hope to know about that here within perhaps an hour or so. What a performance by the Birds here at Wisconsin. As for the first time ever, they claim a win in a Big Ten Arena. The Birds knock off the Badgers by the final score of 77 to 62. Thanks to producer Craig Birchy back at our flagship station WJBC. And Dick Lutke now speaking for the crew here at the Wisconsin Fieldhouse. Gary Walter and Bob Morris and repeating the delightful final score one more time. The Redbirds of ISU 77 and the Badgers of Wisconsin 62. It's on to the quarterfinals of the NIT. We'll talk to you here in a little less than 48 hours from somewhere, either New Orleans or Redbird Arena. So long for now. ISU Basketball. Tonight's post-game coverage has been brought to you by the Alamo 2, by University Liquors, by Schooners, by Maitland Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical, by Everin Securities, by Bank One, by Diamond Vogel Paints, by Denison Used Car Center, and by Denison Toyota. You've been listening to Illinois State University Redbird Basketball on the ISU Sports Flagship AM 1230 WJBC. The Kita Inns are proud to announce the completion of our first 10,000 new gold medal rooms. Soon, every one of our rooms nationwide will have a bright new decor and added features like computer-friendly phones, oversized desks, and a brand new 25-inch TV. Kita, Call 1-800-531-5900 for the Kita Inns nationwide. Let's say that one day your tape deck or VCR or even your computer just quits on you. Will it be worth fixing? Who knows? Radio Shack does. Call 1-800-THE-SHACK for a store near you. We'll tell you about how much it will cost and how soon you'll get it back. We do expert out-of-warranty service on most major brands. Is it worth fixing? Call 1-800-THE-SHACK. You never know until you ask. Radio Shack. You've got questions. We've got answers. AM 1230 WJBC brings you The Scoreboard Show with Craig Burchie. Brought to you by Denison Used Car Center, by Schooners, by Denison Toyota, and by Don and Doug Sutton, your REMAX Twin City Realtors. It's sports news, interviews, and your opinions at 829-2345 or 1-800-322-9377. The Scoreboard Show on AM 1230 WJBC. We played uh, fairly close to our potential, and, you know, we, we thought it would happen like this. We thought that our guys would come together this way, and, and uh, we thought that we could be pretty good at the end, and, and lo and behold, here we are. And, you know, hopefully we're pretty good. We're going to need to be Wednesday night, I can tell you. Deep. Boy, the ISU Redbirds prevail over the Wisconsin Badgers tonight. Welcome into the scoreboard show. 77 to 62. I got to tell you, this is um, this was uh, one of the most satisfying victories I've ever had the opportunity to listen to as far as ISU basketball goes. Boy, just a well-played ball game by the Redbirds who prevail in advance to the third round of the National Invitation Tournament to take on Tulane. My name is Craig Bertschy. I'm your host for the next, oh, 45 minutes or so. 829-2345 or 1-800-322-9377 as we talk Redbird basketball. You're first up on the scoreboard show this evening. Who is this? It's Troy. Troy, my man, what's happening? Not much. I'm assuming... Fan bus on the way home. You're on the fan bus on the way home? Nine buses load. <laughs> oh, this is great. Well, thank you so much for calling. Talk about the game. Oh, my God. It is the best game ever. Jamar Smiley did a great job of dictating the tempo, and I think he should be applauded. He does it all the time. Oh, I know. He's a money man. Boy, I, what's, what was the... Um, 
as ISU began to pull away there with all the Wisconsin fans, what was the feeling there in the arena? Well, what I was feeling is just a rash of shaking from the Redbird fan field. <laughs> and the Wisconsin fans were probably kind of stunned. They didn't expect the team from the Missouri Valley to come up there and do this. Well, I don't know. Big Benner, he gave some compliments. He said, hey, they're a tough team. Anybody can beat Tulsa twice in a row. I mean, twice in the season. They're a tough team. Yeah. He, I mean, he talked good about it on their post-game post show. Oh, so you were listening to them, huh? Yeah. What did their announcers have to say? Tough team. Really? Yeah, I mean, not to cut the Redbirds down or anything, but West Wisconsin had a tough team. You know, some losses to them, some of their best players, but, you know, they come, come some wins and lose them. Hey, uh, you know, we lost a key player in Steve Hansel for a while there, and it hurt us, but we were still in the hunt for the Missouri Valley title despite losing Steve for a while. Yeah, he played awesome tonight. Yes, a couple of singles, and I mean, everybody played awesome. Boy, the, the front line did a great job, too. Rebounding, ISU had the uh, eight-point advantage, or eight-board advantage on the rebounds. That... That I would not expect us going in against the Big Ten team, the way our front line has played at times this year. Well, this looks good for our conference team, the Big Ten school. I wonder why Illinois doesn't want to play us anymore. <laughs> yeah, those Big Ten schools, we haven't, you know, this was our first ever win in a Big Ten arena, and it's one of the few chances that we've had, because we just can't get on their schedules that often. I want to play MVC team. Hey. They got Louisville, the man. Uh, MVC team was beat them. Now they're going to whack. Yeah. Now Wax gonna have a hard time with Tulsa. Well, that's okay. We we can uh, we got to get those Big Ten teams to say, hey, you know, you can't be afraid to play us all the time because we'll get you in the postseason then. Exactly. All right. Well, Troy, you guys have a safe journey back from Madison, okay? Oh, it's snowing there. Oh, uh, it's not snowing yet. Oh, it's snowing up there. Is it? Well, I hope you guys. Hopefully, it'll miss us. <laughs> you should be getting out of it by the time you get to Beloit. Oh, I hope. Okay. Take care, Troy. Yes, All right, bye-bye. 829-2345, 1-800-322-9377. That's awesome when somebody calls all the way from Wisconsin. Heavy cell phone charges, but thank you, Troy, so much for calling in. Hi there, you're next up on the Scoreboard Show. Who is this? Am I on? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this is this is called customer service where we just get you right on the air. This is Jeff. Jeff, my, oh, man. <laughs> is this satisfying or what? This is very satisfying. Oh, I wondered if we... I'm a little bummed that Minnesota didn't win because it's kind of easy to beat up on these Big Ten teams. <laughs> you know, everybody's kicking the Big Ten now. Well, if you remember me, I called in two weeks ago and told you there would not be a Big Ten team in the Sweet 16. My golly, you're right, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, I didn't think the Big Ten would be this bad in postseason play. Well... I did. They were last year. Well, I think, uh, too, players leaving early in the draft hurts them. You know, can we beat Wisconsin? With but the, the Big Ten's is not getting talent and keeping it here in the Midwest where it belongs. You see all these really good high school kids going to, you know, Big East schools, ACC schools. Well, not too many in Chicago aren't. I don't know about Detroit, but uh, in Chicago they're going to Michigan or Illinois. Must not be, because they're not winning either. <laughs> well, they're all leaving for the pros early. I mean, Richard Griffith should still be with Wisconsin. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, he'd be awfully tough to contain for all. <laughs> you wanted to be like Troy, calling in on the bus on the way back from Madison. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping they can get a home game. I, I, I personally can't see uh, how they can not give us one. Cause like, like uh, I'm going to call him Mr. Stallings because he deserves it. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't see how they, they couldn't give us one because, like you said, we could, we could sit and fill up more than 3,600 people on our gym. Well, yeah, that's I true. Would, I would hope this would, uh, would, would fill that place. That's what, okay, that's a good point, because I would think that, yeah, we could sell this place out now. Well, I, I, I what, I'd hope so, but I'd still be a little pessimistic. But I, I'd like to challenge the people in this community. Okay. Just for once, once, get, get their bus out there and get, and, and just fill that place up. Twelve dollars is not that bad for an NIT ticket. No, it's not. Or shell out the bucks and go down to New Orleans and catch Tulane. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a little pricier, yeah. I tell you what, we'll we'll need every advantage we can to beat Tulane. They're a good, good team. Like like Mr. Stalin said, I think they're team number 65 and probably should have been 
They are, they are probably higher than 65, considering some of the teams that got into the... Same 65, because they were... Right. I honestly think they, if there was a... If, if, if that selection committee, which I think every year doesn't do that great a job, if, if there was a, a team that was the next to be picked, it was them. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I think they've probably proven they did, they did deserve to be in it. Is Perry Clark the coach down there? Uh, I think he still is. I think that's right. I'm pretty sure that's right, that it's Perry Clark. Because I'm thinking New Orleans have originally had uh, the former Auburn coach who died, Bobby Joe Eagles, and they hired his assistant. They had hired Bobby Joe Eagles, and like a couple of months later, he died of a heart attack. So, uh, yeah, that's too late. Perry Clark was being kicked around as a candidate for the Illini job. Yeah. But right now, we want to focus on the Green Wave. Very good team, and consider... Think of how much, how far Tulane has come. I mean, this program was in the dregs there for a while after the John Hot Rod Williams point shaving scandal. They had to quit playing basketball for a while. And now look at them. You know, they're back on the verge of becoming a power again in the NCAA tournament like they were back when John Hot Rod Williams was playing. So, a good quality opponent. I'll tell you, what, you mentioned the Illini job. Let me give you a rumor I heard today. Mike Krzyzewski has already signed a contract. I already heard it. Did you? Well, I've, 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 I've heard that he has, uh, I've heard some other rumors in this one along that line, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're all right on it here. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois is just trying to cover up, you think? Uh, they got to keep it hush-hush, you know? Probably. Oh. Kind of scares me, because I think Illinois will do good now if they have a decent coach. <laughs> well, we should hope for that. We're taxpayers, after all. Well, yeah, but now it's now. Maybe, maybe he won't die just the way Lou always did. Well, let's hope. Let's hope so. Okay, Jeff. Thanks for your call. Take it easy. All right, we'll see you out there Wednesday night. 9.52 at WJBC. Ah, 77-62, ISU over Wisconsin. Also, the Bulls win tonight, 98-94. Sands, Dennis Rodman, serving that six-game suspension. And without Scotty Pippen, with an assortment of ailments. We'll come back, talk more ISU basketball in just a moment here on WJBC. The excitement has just begun at Bob Denison Toyota BMW. And here comes the all-star Denison Toyota BMW lineup now. They're pumped up and ready to give you the friendliest, funnest car buying experience you've ever had. So let the action begin. And Denison Toyota BMW starts off with a steal. They've snatched the advantage from their competition with an unbeatable selection of new Toyotas and BMWs. With the quality you want, the safety features you need, and the low price you expect. Denison Toyota BMW is running circles around everyone with their super selection of pre-owned vehicles, too. Domestic and import. Denison Toyota BMW scores. This time with helpful, knowledgeable salespeople who make car buying a fun, rewarding experience. There you have it, Redbird fans. For price, selection, and service, buy your next car from Central Illinois' champion. Bob Denison Toyota BMW, 1508 Morrissey Drive, Wilmington. Are you ready to sell? Look into old. Look for the sign that brings you home. Remax out in front. Redbird fans know what it means to be out in front, to stand out from the competition, to be above the crowd. When looking to buy or sell commercial or residential property, Redbird fans turn to Remax. Remax Twin City Realtors have the winning game plan for the Redbird fan. It starts with dedication and desire. Call it the D plan. Call on Don or Doug Sutton. Don and Doug know dedication and desire better than anyone. Don and Doug have backed the birds for years and now put the same commitment into helping you with all your real estate needs. Don and Doug are star players and team players. Real estate professionals you'll want on your team when it's time to make the deal. Call Don or Doug Sutton, the winning combination at Remax Twin City Realtors, 662-0700. Steve Hans is a great defender, and, and uh, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what he what he means to our basketball team and what it, what it has meant to us not to have him because we're just a completely different basketball team with him in the rotation. Um, he made a great play, got the ball to Mo, and Mo went down and finished the layup and got fouled. And, and then, like you said, that was probably the turning point in the game. Steve Hansel, nice work tonight. Eight points in about 17 minutes. Helping guide the Redbirds past 
Wisconsin. 77-62, Steve Hansel probably play a bigger role Wednesday night against Tulane. Don't know where that game is just yet. We're still awaiting word. Should be another hour or so before we uh, find out word on that. But as soon as we get it, we will pass it along to you here on WJBC. I'm Craig Burchie. You're in tune to the scoreboard show at 9.55. We're talking ISU basketball, of course. The Birds winning over Wisconsin. They will meet Tulane in the third round of the NIT with Tulane, an 84-65 winner at Minnesota. Don't know where it's going to be at. Will it be in New Orleans? Will it be at Redbird Arena on Wednesday night? Well, that remains to be seen. Steve is up next on the scoreboard show. Hi there, Steve. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What a great win. Yeah, it was a great win, but I have a hard time being excited about it. Why is that? It's the Big Ten? We play the way we should have the last week of the season. We're in the NCAA tournament. Mm. Last year, we went to the second round. And we lost that game. So really, the game for us is the next game. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, who's saying no, man? A couple boos here. They disagree with you? Yeah, we're right on campus. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are they saying? I better get into the light here. I forgot about that. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> no well, the big game for us is the next game because we made it to the second round last year, mm -hmm. and we dropped that game. Well, we've already taken a step forward in, in the fact that we have advanced past the second round. Do you think maybe it was a goal of ours to make it past the second round this year, having known what we could already do after last season? Oh, yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that. But uh, you lose you lose a guy like Steve Hansel, it makes you wonder, boy, we don't maybe we don't lose at Indiana State. Maybe we beat Southern Illinois at least once, and maybe we don't lose to Drake in that time. And then you're right, we are in the NCAA tournament, probably as an at-large team. Yes, that's yes. hearsay, but I imagine we would have had a very good shot at an at-large berth in three teams in. Or, well, there'll probably be two teams in the Valley in the NCAA tournament. Tulsa would be the, or Bradley might be the ones on the outside looking in. Right, because our goal wasn't to make it to the NIT, it was to make it to the NCAA tournament. Well, we may as well win the darn NIT while we're at it. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but the NIT is a good step for us for next year, considering all our youth. We're giving those sophomores another chance to develop some more in some pressure situations. Tonight, a great experience playing in a tough field house up there in Wisconsin. Oh, I, I hope we keep going. I agree with you on that. So, you guys are students, right? Right. You guys will be out there Wednesday night at the arena if it's a home game? Oh, definitely. We'll now, pick up the tickets tomorrow. Okay, Steve. Now, how are you as a loyal ISU fan and student going to do your part and get all those students out there so that way we can have a packed house? Oh, I'm going to try my hardest. I sit in the front row for every home game, so what? I'll be out there. Why aren't there more students out What's their excuse? Some of the people who don't go to the games, you talk to them, what, what are they saying? Um, basically, people get up for the Bradley game, the Southern game, the big rivalries like that, but being a school that we are, I just think that considering we're not a Big Ten team, we're not in a big conference, people don't want to come out and see us. That's pretty lame. You know, yeah, it's very lame, but <laughs> you know, I do my best to back them. Well, I hope you can drag some people out there with you. I guess you'll have to pay some tickets. Oh, I'm going to try. I got about 10 friends going. Good, good. Well, if you can have them bring 10 friends and have 100 people out there then. Yeah, we're going to try hard. Okay, Steve. Well, hopefully we'll be seeing you out there Wednesday night, all right? All right. Thanks for taking my call. No problem, Steve. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Tom is up next. Hi, Tom. Hey, Craig. Uh, that guy before me just changed my whole subject. Oh, no. What's that? Well, hey, I, I'm all for that guy. I, I love the students being in there. I want a whole bunch of them there. And as a long time uh, ISU Redbird backer and ticket holder, I'm all for giving those guys tickets for a dollar. I tend to disagree with the guy in the background there that talked about uh, how ISU has a vacuum cleaner sound. <laughs> but, uh, well, he's that, probably had a few too many uh, Colorado coolers. He might have had a few cocktails, but that's good for him, too. I mean, <laughs> those guys should have a good time. I want them all at the game. Uh, even if they do have that opinion. I want them at the game. I want all those guys. Those guys are the ones that create the atmosphere that mm -hmm. I need at home. I think Stallings want that. I think the, the, the long-term fans want that. Uh, and, and those guys make the game. I, the, the last game at home, the, 
uh, oh, that was such a fun game at home. Yeah. That NIT game. Mm -hmm. It was, there was a very, very, very tiny crowd, and those guys might not have been there. You know, they could have been at home uh, on spring break or, or wherever they may have been. Uh, but we had a great crowd there. It was a loud crowd. It was a windy little crowd, but it, I had a great time that night. We also had, let's uh, again focus tonight, nine busloads of ISU fans made the journey up to Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, I, you know what? Don't, don't make me feel guilty, okay? I didn't go. <laughs> I'm not, because I can't go. I would have loved to have gone, but unfortunately I had to engineer the game. Go, Sean, too, but uh, I didn't. Uh, but, I was, but the one thing I did want to talk about is I watched, I had the news on the TV watching Tulane and listening to Dick on the radio. Okay, what did you think of the Green Wave? Tulane is, is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, although they shot the lights out tonight. Uh, it seemed like they never hardly missed a shot, and I tend to think they're not going to be able to keep that up for two games in a row. And the one question I had for you, because I thought maybe you'd know more about this, we had some, uh, some, a little BS going on at work today, and somebody said that they sometimes play at the Superdome. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, they do. Well, I don't think we're worthy of the Superdome, are we? That's, so that's what I wondered, if they could get the game there. I, don't, I wouldn't want it there. It's too cavernous. We may, well, we may not be able to have a home. I mean, I'm all for the home game, mm -hmm. of course. But, uh, uh, if, and, of course, they're not going to put it down there with 3,500. True. Sorry, I mean, we can do that. But, uh, Our lower bowl could easily be fixed. Yeah, but uh, uh, if, if that's true, that they, that they do sometimes play the Superdome, and they, they got an open date, it's possible we can still go down there. Okay. Uh, especially with the wimpy crowd we had. Well, I'm sure we'll have a vocal crowd this time around, Tom. I certainly hope so. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm uh, as bad as I feel about not going, I'm so glad that we have so many people going up there. Uh, I, I know a lot of people that went. I even had an invite, but uh, I... I didn't make it myself. Well, because I you to them and I was cheering them on here. Because you didn't go up there, that's why we won. That, that's probably why. Okay, Tom. Very good. Thanks for calling, man. All right, bye-bye. 1002 at WJBC. 829-2345-1-800-322-9377 are the numbers. Craig Birchie in with you on the scoreboard show. ISU beats Wisconsin 77 to 62. And I love this. The people remember me up in Wisconsin. Hi there, who's this? This is Mary Mercer. I'm calling from bus number eight. Dave! Hey. back from a victory. Way to go, Mary. Tell, tell everybody in there, you guys did a great job tonight. Coach Stallings. Great job! Everybody say yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Coach Stallings was praising. He had nothing but high praise for the contingent that went up there. He said as he was walking off the floor as uh, the team was going into the locker room before the game started, that all of a sudden he heard this cheer up in the upper reaches wherever you were up there somewhere by Eau Claire. Up in the upper <laughs> you were up there by La Crosse and uh, all of a sudden he just couldn't believe it. It gave the team such a lift that you guys were out there and cheering like crazy like that. So you guys really deserve a big round of applause for making the trek up there, the three hour, three and a half hour ride up to Madison to bring our vi well, birds home. A lot of fun having a win. It's a lot easier coming home with a win than it was a lot. So is everybody buzzing right now? Yeah, well we're kind of mellowed out a little bit. We just want to know if we've heard anything about a home game. Not yet. Not yet. Hopefully by 10.30, 10.45 we'll hear something. But okay, we might give everybody a call back. That, that would be great, Mary. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's 10.03 at WJBC. It's the scoreboard show talking about ISU's 77-62 victory over Wisconsin. The birds can beat the Big Ten. We'll come back, talk more about it in just a moment here on WJBC. Denison Used Car Center features Central Illinois' largest selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and vans so you can pick the vehicle you want. Oh, yes. Buy it. Then drive it for under 250 miles in less than three days. And if for whatever reason and you change your mind, Smiling Steve Peterson will give you your money back. That's right. Smiling Steve Peterson loves his cars, trucks, and vans at Denison Used Car Center so much. Baby, I love you. He's not afraid to offer this area's only three-day money-back guarantee. After all, uh, money isn't uh, everything. So you buy it, drive it under 250 miles in less than three days, change your mind, and decide you want to take it back. Smiling Steve and the guys at Denison say, go ahead. Take it back. Do -do 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 -do. 
take it back. The Denison used car difference. The only dealer with a three-day money-back guarantee. Bob Denison Used Car Center, 1103 South Morrissey, just south of Lakeside Country Club. You want to be part of the show? You can. Just give us a call right now at 829-2345 or toll free at 1-800-322-9377. Al Salvi, candidate for U.S. Senate. No matter how hard you work, it seems to a lot of people that they're not able to succeed. Well, I'm here to say that you can, and as a U.S. Senator, I want to make sure that we create an economy of opportunity. Al Salvi, on taxes. We need to cut taxes, take the government's burden off of the American family. When people have their own money to spend, they spend it, they invest it, they build with it. They do far more than government will ever do. Al Salvi on government. This huge ship keeps moving in the same direction. More and more government, which means more and more taxes, and it's got to stop. Al Salvi on Bob Kustra. The National Taxpayers Union ranked Bob Kustra who works among all legislators on taxes and spending. I've led the fight against tax increases. Bob Kustra didn't do that. Al Salvi. Fighting for the families of Illinois. Paid for by the Al Salvi for U.S. Senate Committee. 10.05 at WJBC. Winter storm watch in effect for tomorrow. Weather-wise tonight, cloudy and windy. Snow developing late to low of 33 degrees. Tomorrow, look, three to six inches of snow. Windy, a high of 35. And Wednesday, lingering flurries, a high of 35. 37 right now at WJBC. My name is Craig Birchie. We're in Studio A here at the WJBC Studios talking ISU Redbird basketball on the scoreboard show. By the way, I want to congratulate Illinois Wesleyan's Titans, Denny Bridges, Chris Simmons, Brian Crabtree, John Lipweiler, Brady Knight, on and on and on. Uh, great job this season, guys. Third place in Division Three, And, boy, what a fantastic finish in the Final Four there for the Illinois Wesleyan Titans. Congratulations on a great season. Let's get back to the phone calls, though, as we talk about ISU's 77-62 win over Wisconsin. Deva, am I saying your name right? Yes. Good. I want to make sure I get this right. How are you doing tonight? Oh, wonderful. Boy, were you jumping around the house, dancing around as ISU pulled away in this one? Yes. You were. You were. You were pumped. Yes. And I'm, I'm happy for my mother and my son, who is a freshman in high school. They, they made the trip up there to Wisconsin, and I know that they are thrilled. I'd just like to remind my son that he will be going to school tomorrow. So oh. Try and settle down and get some sleep. <laughs> well, he probably can't hear you right now, although I may be in syndication in Rockford. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's good that he made the trip up there, even though he's got the early morning tomorrow. Right. Well, he, he wouldn't miss it. Boy, I, it's every home game and wouldn't. So are you going to make it out uh, Wednesday night? Or should the game be here at ISU? Absolutely. You will be. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll shell my out husband the... husband and my daughter and all the rest of us that didn't make it tonight. So. Well, you know, we can't, you know, you only have so many tickets to purchase when you're ISU. You only have so many tickets available to you in a situation like that. Because the Wisconsin fans are pretty uh, supportive, especially now that they have the coach in place that they've wanted to have for years mm -hmm. in Dick Bennett. So they're, that's a supportive bunch up there. But for us to go in there and beat a program that I feel is going to be on the rise here in the next few years, that's man, that's great. You know, two programs on the rise, but we're a little further along, I think. Mm -hmm. You agree with that assessment? We've been doing better every year. <laughs> it's going to be fun next year, I tell you. NCAA tournament, look out. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dave. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, Chris. Hi, Craig. How are you? Oh, man. Feeling great. Feeling great. Are you going to make it out to the airport at 11 o'clock tonight? Not, but I will be at the game Wednesday if we play it. Super. But let me reiterate again. Uh, estimated time of arrival for the ISU basketball team out at the Bloomington Normal Airport about 11 o'clock. So, you know, 50 minutes or so they should be landing. And, boy, would well, that be great to have a huge crowd out there to welcome them back home after a hard-fought victory. It'd be fabulous. It sounds like we had more fans there tonight than we had down in St. Louis. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Did you make it down to St. Louis, Chris? Pardon? Did you make it down to St. Louis? Yeah, I was there for both games. Good for you. Uh, we we definitely want to fill this place up yeah. Wednesday night if we have the home game. Definitely. You want to challenge the students. I mean, you know, for four bucks, I mean, you can't beat it. We got, what, 20,000 students. I went to school there. Craig, you did, too. You know, I, just, I never could understand why they couldn't go. You get that student pass for $30 for football and basketball, and they just don't go. I don't understand. But anyway, let's get back to the good stuff. Here, here. So let's talk about Bo Trotter. I mean, okay. He really sucked it up here. He didn't have a, a great uh, 
Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. He was kind of shooting bad for the end of the year. He really picked it up the first two games, and he kind of gets lost a little bit here. Uh, Coach talks about Muller and everything, and the Trotters really sucked it up and, and, and done his job. I mean, he's a scorer for us, and he's going to be hard to replace next year. He's going to be the one guy that we're losing. Um, you know, Cooper, I know, with three right inside, but we do have some guys who can do that. Somebody's going to have to really step up next year and score. But. Well, I think we do have guys capable of doing that. I think Dan Muller will be able to do that if he continues to attack the basket like he has, because I think by doing that, slashing towards the bucket, it will open up his outside shot a little more. And I think Dan is the type of player, he's very versatile. Remember, he was a post player in high school. Right. So he can back, he can play with his back to the bucket, and he can also cut to the basket, and he can also front, you know, play with his front to the basket. That's right. That's right. Defensively, though, that, that kind of weird. I mean, I know he scored 10 or 12 tonight, but mm -hmm. he play hard. He usually plays the best offensive player for the other team. Right. So, you know, he's really not expected to score. Maybe his role next year will change a little bit. Well, I imagine he'll still play the great defense. I mean, Michael Jordan, can, he scored 38 tonight, but he'll play great defense right. for you. Right, exactly. But uh, just Trotter's really done a great job. And uh, Cardinal didn't play tonight, correct? Um, he did play very sparingly, though. He did play a little bit. Yeah. But you had Steve Hansel at a, your availability. And when you're going against the Big Ten, you know, you have bigger guards. And you've got to have some you got to have some possibilities there as far as your matchups. You want to match up size-wise, especially when you're at a size disadvantage up front. You want to make sure you keep those guards off the bucket and on the rebounds, and Steve was able to do that. He, Steve only played 17 minutes, but had eight points and played some great D, too. I agree, and, and it, it, we can't reiterate enough about this next game as far as if we can win. To get to the Final Four, and we're going to be on national TV for two more games, mm -hmm. you know, as far as recruiting can't do anything but that's not going to do anything but help your program right and it's on at a good time too pardon the game would be on at a good time too not at 11. exactly and we don't play a team that wakes up usually like coach said at 11 o'clock <laughs> night cincinnati I mean, that's because they got to go out and womanize that night it, exactly <laughs> they're just waking up but uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just great to see and you know you hope that we can really fill this place it sounds like you know with the crowd we had tonight and hopefully you know everybody gets behind these guys you do a great job, and everything is going great. You know, Coach Stalling stock is probably going up at a lot of different places. And I hey. talked about this last time I called. You know, they, they had some of the paper about it after I talked to you. Right, time. year to year, and Rick Greenspan's answered that on this program before. But, you know, at this point, people, you expect it. Well, of course. You know, and I think people, you know... It happened with Coach, what, Coach Bender was there for four years and right. moved on? I, you know, we can expect Coach Stallings to stay here a long time, and I'm really not going to get into this too much, but let's face it, you know, who knows what could happen. But right now he seems very happy here, very content here, and that's great. That is terrific. And, you know, it's like anybody else. Would you stop them from taking a job at a, a better situation? Well, I offered you a million dollars tomorrow, Craig. I'm sure you would probably jump on it. Oh, it would be awfully tempting to pass on it, though. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, before I cut you loose here, Chris, Player of the game tonight, uh, with all due respect to Leroy Watkins, who played a huge game. Uh -huh. But the guy who is the absolute key to the game, without a doubt, Jamar Smiley. Definitely. Jamar did a great job pushing the tempo in the second half, trying to wear down the Badgers. And that was the that was the key there. That's what enabled ISU to pull away in the second half and start to build that cushion. Because the Badgers were tired, and the tempo was not in their control. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And it looks like Tulane, from watching them tonight, and I... I've got an opportunity to watch them play in their conference this year, and they, they play in a fabulous conference. Mm -hmm. Conference USA is going to be it's going to be nothing but great with the teams that are in there. Yeah. And uh, it seems like they like to go up and down a little bit too. So should be a fun game if it's here Wednesday night. It should be great, Chris. Well, thanks again. Thank you, Chris. Take it easy. All right. Have a nice all right. Bye bye. Ten thirteen at WJBC. Hi there. You're next on the Scoreboard Show. Who's this? Hi, this is Chris. Uh, wait a minute, another Chris? Yeah. My gosh, how are you tonight? Not too bad, eh? When the birds win, you got to be feeling good. Woo, and the bulls win, too. Sands Rodman. All right. The worm, head butt, takes off the shirt. I'm waiting for the day he runs naked off the floor. <laughs> it will happen. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, my God, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> but uh, back to the birds. 77-62 over Wisconsin. Illinois State advances to the third round to the quarterfinals. Second time in school history, actually be third time, but way back when, I think it was uh, when they lost to Otis Birdsong in Houston, that was back when it was a 16-team tournament, so that would have been the equivalent of the second round? Uh, before my time. Yeah. 
That was back when Gene Smithson was coaching. By the way, his son Randy today named the head coach of the Wichita State Shockers. So we have three former inner city basketball players coaching in the Division I ranks. Is this a basketball hotbed or what? All right, yeah, definitely. I mean, you got Bob Bender out of Washington, a Bloomington grad. You got Jim Cruz over at Evansville, a U-High grad. Now you have normal community product Randy Smithson coaching at Wichita State, his alma mater. That's great. So congrats to uh, Randy. And, you know, I told Randy after I got done talking with him this afternoon, we'll root for you up here, except for when you play ISU. Right. <laughs> Your thoughts on the game tonight? Oh, well, I only heard uh, a couple minutes in the second half. And Where were you? Well, you know, have other things to do, but in the car, almost got in a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> First up by six, and all of a sudden, you know, Jamar Smiley hits a three, and, and I think that's when Mo went in and scored, and they got a foul on him. You know, and, and then all of a sudden, they're up by 12. It's just like, you know, this is, this is Redbird basketball right here. Yeah, they, it's great to see this team playing the way it's supposed to play. Definitely, definitely. Or hear this team playing the way it's supposed to play. Like right. In our situation tonight. But, you know, I, I thought the Mount St. Mary's game would have been closer. I had an uneasy feeling about tonight's game uh, just because, you know, we're going into Wisconsin, you know. But I wondered how the guy who got hurt, the Peterson, I think, Moselle Peterson, who had his knee dislocated. Right. I wondered how they would react to it and stop trying to stop Sam Oakey and Dick Bennett. You know, you know what a great coach he is. It's just very difficult to try and figure out how you can gauge this game. And it turns out we... And we had nothing to worry about. Right, definitely. You know, you, when you, especially when you think of the Big Ten, you, you kind of tend to think that, you know, they're a step above some of the other teams. But not this year, especially, you know, with uh, them losing in the NCAA. And now, it's, you know, now losing in the NIT. Um, Did you get burned in your NCAA pool <laughs> with the Big Ten? I actually didn't go. You know, I, I learned a long, long time ago. Don't do those pools because everybody you always pick gets beat. <laughs> well, I'm down. Around, there's always somebody that is right. going to go all the way, and then all of a sudden they get beat. <laughs> um, throw about everything. Well, that's that's a very good attitude to have, Chris, and I think I'm going to have to adopt that attitude next season. One, one thing I wanted to say, too, real quick, is uh, I heard a gentleman on the way home talking about when, last Wednesday's game. And I don't know the terminology used. Something about the Wimpy fans or something like that here at Redbird Arena. I think he referred... Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I think he was referring to the, as far as the numbers that came out, not the crowd that was there, okay. because it was a rather good, it was a rather strong crowd. It was very vocal, but you draw just over, you know, just under 6,000. That's not a lot. Right, but you get, you know, the one thing I, I want to, you know, just make clear is that the, the fans, I mean, the students were on break. That doesn't matter here. Well, some of us. Chris, they don't turn out. Uh, you know, they do sometimes, though, you know. When yeah, when it's Bradley and SIU. You know, when it's like a Bradley game or something like that, you see a lot of fans. Um, I think that if it is here at home, which I hope it is, I hope the game's here at home, uh, that I think we'll get a lot more fan support. Mm -hmm. You know, it's deeper in the NIT, and... Uh, you know, unfortunately, More at stake. jump on your bandwagon a little yeah. bit, but... Hey, this is only helping us for our power rankings next year at the start <laughs> of the season. Definitely. And this is fantastic, you know. You're getting to the point where you're going to be playing teams now who will be in the NCAA tournament next year, chances are. These teams are young teams on the rise, like us, like Tulane, like Alabama, which won tonight, South Carolina a winner tonight. And then who knows how things shake down tomorrow with the other four games in the NIT. But this is fun. Right, and that's another thing, too. I mean, you know, uh, I think Greenspan was talking about how Coach Stallings, you know, has always said he wants to get this, you know, to get this team back up to, a, you know, a great level. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just the start. When you look at Bradley went in a couple years ago and they win the NIT, and now they're, you know, they're a really strong team, yeah. I think, you know. I think this is what's going to happen to ISU. They're just going to get better and stronger, and that's, you know, Coach Stallings and the whole team. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little different situation between us and Bradley. Bradley's a senior-dominated ball club with an outstanding junior, whereas we're a little spread out. We're younger, and we're in the same situation Bradley was in a couple of years ago, but we don't have the large numbers in a certain class. We're more defined as far as spread out. Right. We got a, we have a great defense. I mean, we mm -hmm. Steve Hansel in there and, you know, and everybody, you know, like that Muller. Yeah. I mean, just great defense. All, all and them. Leroy Watkins. Definitely. <laughs> Leroy's a heck of a defender. People don't realize it, but he is a heck of a post defender. So. Yeah. All righty, Chris. All right. Take it easy, man. We'll see you out there Wednesday night, hopefully. Right. Have a good night. All right, you too. Bye-bye. 1018 at WJBC.
Taking your calls on an ISU victory. 77-62-829-2345. 1-800-322-9377 are the numbers back in just a moment on the scoreboard show. The excitement has just begun at Bob Dennison. Perry on the 17th green. Mr. Bob Muir is going for birdie and the lead. He looks down, his mind totally focused on this putt. Hmm, why am I paying so much interest on my credit cards? Is a home equity loan really smart for me? And what about a personal loan? Yeah, what about the bill for Lowry's braces? If you can't get questions about loans off your mind, relax. Bank One has answers. Let's talk. A few minutes with your personal banker, one-to-one, -one, and you'll have all the help you need to find what you need. A smarter loan, and maybe the time to think about more important things. Mr. Mir is still lining up the putt. Amazing concentration. Bank One. Whatever it takes. Member FDIC. Equal housing opportunity lender. Loan subject to credit approval. Consult your tax advisor regarding the deductibility of interest. For smart loans, call 1-800-56-LOAN-1. In our homes and in our businesses, we expect things to run smoothly. But what happens when they don't? Who do you call if the furnace or air conditioner goes out? If the sump pump stops working? Or there's a plumbing or electrical problem? You could call a Mr. Fix-It, but what are you getting? There's really only one name you need to remember. Maitland's. Maitland's is ready to take care of any of those problems for your home or your business because they are your total service center. From heating and cooling systems and service, plumbing and electrical service, home inspections for buyers or sellers, electronic air filters, humidification systems, carbon monoxide detectors, and sump pumps, the only name you need to remember is Maitland's. Maitland's also has service contracts available and 24-hour emergency service. To keep everything running smoothly at home and at work, depend on Maitland's at 3005 Gill Street in Bloomington. Or call Maitland's at 828-7624. Redbird 77, Wisconsin 62, and Kevin Stalling's team is headed to the quarterfinal round of the NIT. Coach, congratulations. Well, Dick, thank you. Um, I know I say this a lot, but I could not be prouder of our players. Um, that was an unbelievable performance to come in here and play a team that uh, obviously is very good and, and we, our guys just played their hearts out and played well offensively, played well defensively, played well on the backboard and uh, it was just a tremendous, tremendous effort by every single player we had and uh, I don't want to go any further without saying this, there were about nine busloads of people that had a whole bunch of fun tonight yep. and we really appreciated their presence. We appreciate it. They, they actually made some noise in here. I think we were we were outnumbered about 10,000 to 1,000, but uh, we actually had some action going in here for the, from the Illinois State people, and we appreciate the heck out of them making the trip up here and, and being interested enough and, and supportive enough of our program to, to come up here on a weeknight and, and make the kind of noise they did. They did generate some noise, but that's because you guys gave them reason to. What a, what a great performance. Was it your best game of the year, do you think? Well, it, it certainly wasn't the worst. Um, we, we've, uh, I don't know if we've played better, but um, it was it was very, very good. The second half was unbelievable. We we really accomplished it. It's kind of amazing. You, you throw together a game plan. You say, well, we think this will work, and we think that will work, and this is what we need to do. And tonight was just one of those nights where the kids went out and executed it perfectly, and it worked out perfectly. We, we wanted to extend the floor create as many possessions in the game as we possibly could and and really try to wear them down and I thought that showed late in the second half I thought we were able to wear them down take the legs out from under them a little bit and, and it's supposed to play definitely definitely or hear this team playing the way it's supposed to play right in our situation tonight but, you know, I, I thought the Mount St. Mary's game would have been closer. I had an uneasy feeling about tonight's game uh, just because, you know, we're going into Wisconsin, you know. But I wondered how the guy who got hurt, the Peterson, I think, Moselle Peterson, who had his knee dislocated. Right. I wondered how they would react to it and stop trying to stop Sam Oakey. It, it, and Dick Bennett, you know, you know what a great coach he is. It's just very difficult to try and figure out how you could gauge this game. And it turns out we 
and we had nothing to worry about. Right, definitely. You know, you, when you, especially when you think of the Big Ten, you, you kind of tend to think that, you know, they're a step above some of the other teams. But not this year, especially, you know, with uh, them losing in the NCAA. And now, it's, you know, now losing in the NIT. Um, Did you get burned in your NCAA pool? With the Big Ten. I actually didn't go. You know, I've, I've learned a long, long time ago. Don't do those pools because everybody you always pick gets beat. <laughs> well, I'm down. Around, there's always somebody that you know, right. is going to go all the way, and then all of a sudden they get beat. <laughs> you know, just throw that everything. Well, that's that's a very good attitude to have, Chris, and I think I'm going to have to adopt that attitude next season. One, one thing I wanted to say, too, real quick, is uh, I heard a gentleman on the way home talking about when, last Wednesday's game. I don't know the terminology used something about the wimpy fans or something like that here at Redbird Arena. I think he refer. yeah, I know what you're saying, but I think he was referring to the, as far as the numbers that came out, not the crowd that was there, okay. because it was a rather good, it was a rather strong crowd. It was very vocal, but you draw just over, you know, just under 6,000. That's not a lot. Right, but you got, you know, the one thing I, I want to, you know, just make clear is that the, the fans, I mean, the students were on break. That doesn't matter here. Well, some of us, Chris, they don't turn out. Uh, you know, they do sometimes, though. You know, when yeah, when it's Bradley and SIU. You know, when it's like a Bradley game or something like that, you see a lot of fans. Um, I think that if it is here at home, which I hope it is, I hope the game's here at home. Uh, that I think we'll get a lot more fan support. Mm -hmm. You know, it's deeper in the NIT, and uh, you know, unfortunately, more at stake. jump on your bandwagon a little yeah. bit, but. Hey, this is only helping us for our power rankings next year at the start of the season. <laughs> Definitely. And this is fantastic. You know, you're getting to the point where you're going to be playing teams now who will be in the NCAA tournament next year, chances are. These teams are young teams on the rise, like us, like Tulane, like Alabama, which won tonight, South Carolina a winner tonight. And then who knows how things shake down tomorrow with the other four games in the NLT. But this is fun. Right, and that's another thing, too. I mean, you know, uh, I think Greenspan was talking about how Coach Stallings, you know, has always said he wants to get this, you know, to get this team back up to a, you know, a great level. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just the start. When you look at Bradley, went in a couple years ago, and they win the NIT, and now they're, you know, they're a really strong team. Yeah. I think, you know, I think this is what's going to happen to ISU. They're just going to get better and stronger, and that's, you know, Coach Stallings and the whole team. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little different situation between us and Bradley. Bradley's a senior-dominated ball club with an outstanding junior, whereas we're a little spread out. We're younger. And we're in the same situation Bradley was in a couple of years ago, but we don't have the large numbers in a certain class. We're more defined as far as spread out. Right. We got a, We have a great defense. I mean, we mm -hmm. just Steve Hansel in there, and you know, and everybody, you know, like that Mueller. Yeah. I mean, it's great defense. All, all and them. Leroy Watkins. Definitely. <laughs> Leroy's a heck of a defender. People don't realize it, but he is a heck of a post defender. So. Yeah. All righty, Chris. All right. Take it easy, man. We'll see you out there Wednesday night, hopefully. Right. Have a good night. All right, you too. Bye-bye. 1018 at WJBC. Taking your calls on an ISU victory. 77-62-829-2345. 1-800-322-9377 are the numbers. Back in just a moment on the scoreboard show. The excitement has just begun at Bob Dennison Toyota BMW. And here comes the all-star Dennison Toyota BMW lineup now. They're pumped up and ready to give you the friendliest, funnest car buying experience you've ever had. So let the action begin. And Dennison Toyota BMW starts off with a steal. They've snatched the advantage from their competition with an unbeatable selection of new Toyotas and BMWs. With the quality you want, the safety features you need, and the low price you expect. Denison Toyota BMW is running circles around everyone with their super selection of pre-owned vehicles too, domestic and import. Denison Toyota BMW scores, this time with helpful, knowledgeable salespeople who make car buying a fun, rewarding experience. There you have it, Redbird fans, for price selection and service, buy your next car from Central Illinois' champion, Bob Denison Toyota BMW 1508 Morrissey Drive, Wilmington. This is the scoreboard, and you can be part of it by giving us a call right now at 829-2345 or 1-800-322-9377. Are you on the lookout for someone special, and you're tired of meat markets? Then the place you need to be is Schooners. Come on in to Schooners on East Grove and Bloomington and see Pat's new look and Richie's old traditional look. In fact, just come in and look around. Find someone you like and buy him some onion rings. 
But don't plan on buying those rings with a Visa or American Express. Bob and Mike only accept cash. Lots of them. Schooners. It's where the lookers and lookees want to be. You know, that's where I was today. And lunch down there at Schooners. Well, I guess I'm a looker and a lookee at the same time. Ah, Craig Birchy in with you on the scoreboard show. 829-2345, 1-800-322-9377. Running down the NIT scoreboard, Illinois State over Wisconsin, 77-62. to ah, Birds advanced to play Tulane in the third round of the NIT. Tulane, an 84-65 winner at Minnesota. What an impressive win for the Green Wave. South Carolina bombs uh, Vanderbilt, 80-70. to Game wasn't as close as the score indicates. Alabama just destroys Mizzou. Come on, Mizzou. No, it's not the NCAA, but you always lose in the NCAA. Why don't you step it up in the NIT? 72-49 score there in the NBA tonight. Denver beats Toronto 122-114. And Chicago, without Dennis Rodman, beats Philadelphia 98-94. Back we go to the phones. Bradley is up. Hi, Bradley. How you doing? You're a student, right? Yes, I am. And why don't the students show up? And are they going to show up? Wednesday if it's a home game. I have a couple things to bring up, and that was one of the things I was going to bring up. Good. Thank you for opening it up. Um, I think, you know, I've been around the area. I've been here for four years. I am a senior. And myself, I haven't missed the uh, ISU home game since I was a freshman. I missed one game that year. Since then, I have made it a point to be at every game. Sometimes I've had to even skip a class, which is probably not the best thing in the world. But, you know, I've been to as many games as I can. Now, as far as, like, other schools in the area, you go to Illinois, you go to Wisconsin, you go to Michigan, Michigan State, schools like that, and you visit, you see posters of their players all around campus. You see, you know, they got, like, you know, shoe deals going on nationwide, this and that. These people are, are being encouraged to go, I think, by the media. And around here, and I'm not saying that you guys aren't doing a good job, because I know every time I listen to your show, you're, you're you know, giving people a lot, of, uh, a lot of crud about going out to these games. But I think the media really plays a big part in that. The Vedette um, has pretty poor coverage. Uh, that, that's the ISD school newspaper. <laughs> yeah, I'm aware of the Vedette. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, the Vedette is, is you have, uh, you know, you have the story of the game, you know, that they played last night and a picture from like three weeks ago. And it's just, you know, people, who's going to read that? Well, to the Vedette's defense, you're limited in some respects there because... After all, you are a student newspaper. Let's face it; they don't have the facilities available to them that the Panagraph would. Right, and and even in the even in the Panagraph, the thing is that you know that's a mostly community-oriented newspaper. You know, no, a lot, not a lot of students read the Panagraph as, as far as, as I know. Uh, a lot of students read the Tribune and the Sun Times. Sure, exactly. But there's not a lot of coverage there. You're you're right, and you know what it is. Like I said, it's a conference thing. You you've seen it as well as I have, as far as you know the tournament, uh, the committees that are the people that are picking these teams. They take teams for their conference, not for their quality. Mm -hmm. And you've seen it all along. I mean, the Big Ten, you know, if, uh, I don't know, if uh, Michigan State loses tomorrow, there'll be zero Big Ten teams left in any tournament. And, I mean, I, no one's really taking notice of that, but it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing fact. What I wanted to bring up, my last thing before I jump off here, is that, uh, you know, people keep saying Tulane's going to be tough and that we don't have a chance. And uh, I people haven't said that here. We just know it's going to be a tough game. heard it elsewhere. Oh, okay. The, uh, the thing that I want to bring up, and you never want to look at the law of transitive property, but, you know, you look at teams like Northern Iowa, who played close to Iowa this year. You look at teams like Bradley, who, who played close to Villanova and beat Georgia Tech. You look at teams like Tulsa, who just in, in the last week, you know, almost beat Louisville and has played very well out, outside their conference. And these are teams that we have beaten all year. So I, I just want to point out, you know, Tulane, it's whoever comes to play on that night. And if well, you come to play, we got a shot, you know. Bradley, what it boils down to is how well-rested can we be and how good will, uh, what kind of shape will Jamar's back be in. Absolutely. we got a lot of injuries. <laughs> I mean, we had a, we've had some good preparation time. Now these guys need to rest really quick. <laughs> you get about a day to rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. they got to get up early for class. Hopefully Coach Stallings let them nap a few times tomorrow. Just take it easy. Well, I'll tell you what, if we don't have to go down to New Orleans, we can get some extra nap time. Huh? All right. That, that would be sweet. That's why we need the home game, too. Exactly. I hope we get that home game. I've been trying to call on the Chicago media and find out. They still haven't gotten off the one. Well, uh, we'll know before they will. I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay, Thank Brent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bird. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Jeff. What's up, we are celebrating an ISU victory. You are happy? I am very happy. The Moval beats the Big Ten tonight. Isn't that something? Mm -mm -mm. 
I think I think you were one of those guys that were saying I, I, I just wasn't sure where they were going to be. Well, I, it's hard to gauge this team. What? It is really hard to gauge our club when you look at the way we played heading out, you know, down the end of the season. We weren't playing very good basketball. We did not play that great of basketball in the Missouri Valley Tournament. Absolutely, and you know, uh, we were talking about uh, three keys. You said the main key you thought to the game was uh, Jamar. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I disagree. Why? After all, tempo is the key against Dick Bennett. Exactly, but uh, I think two of the biggest keys was the fact that Mo stepped it up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And my man. Steve Hansel. You know who he is. Well, Steve also helps dictate the tempo as well. Exactly. When he's going in for uh, Jamar, unfortunately due to Jamar's back condition, like Coach Stallings pointed out in the postgame, you can't rest him too long because his back will stiffen up. Exactly. And so, you know, mm, a touchy injury, though. Well, you know, control the whole body. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of kind of leads to everything there. But okay. your your back goes to your front, you know. Yeah, Steve though did great work in 17 minutes. They're still trying to break him in, which is not the obvious thing to do. Steve might see more minutes here uh, Wednesday night, though. I would think. Absolutely. And I was another one of these persons listening to Dick and uh, watching Dick? Tulane and. Uh -huh. Minnesota, and they were lighting it up. Yeah. I mean, you know, hopefully, hopefully they won't bring it, bring it to the Red River. They can leave it in Minnesota. They, they, they can burn the barn, but not the arena. <laughs> okay, Jeff. All right. So what did you say? Uh, somebody said something about Chesky and. Oh no, I do. What was that? Uh, that it, the, it's a somebody said the rumor the contract are, is already signed with Shashevsky in Illinois. Well, I've heard a couple of. Them. I've heard some rumors too, but that's what this show is not on. Well, I yeah, no, come on, you're you're conducting the show. You're the biggest rumor monger there is. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, come on. Hey, Sweeney, Sweeney said, mm -hmm. put it in the bank. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to stand by that. Yeah. Mike Krzyzewski will be the head coach of the University of Illinois. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'll stand by that. You, oh, you really think it's going to happen? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't understand what he would do, but... Yeah. I mean, there must be something... Dollar signs, my friend. Dollar signs. Oh, you think that's what it is? Yeah, sure. Well, that's okay. But I, we're not worried about Illinois. No. Now. Right now, I ask you to focus. Jeff, we got to run, okay? Hey, get somebody else on there and go red. We will. All right, thanks, Jeff. Take care. All right, bye-bye. It's 1027. Last call as we wrap up the scoreboard show in just a moment. Denison Used Car Center features Central Illinois' largest selection of quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and vans so you can pick the vehicle you want. Oh, yes. Buy it. Then drive it for under 250 miles in less than three days. And if for whatever reason you change your mind, smiling Steve Peterson will give you your money back. That's right. Smiling Steve Peterson loves his cars, trucks, and vans at Denison Used Car Center so much. Baby, I love you. He's not afraid to offer this area's only three-day money-back guarantee. After all, uh, money isn't uh, everything. So you buy it, drive it under 250 miles in less than three days, change your mind, and decide you want to take it back. Smiling Steve and the guys at Denison say, go ahead. Take it back. Take it back. The Denison used car difference. The only dealer with a three-day money-back guarantee. Bob Denison Used Car Center, 1103 South Morrissey, just south of Lakeside Country Club. As we hit the home stretch for the scoreboard show on a Monday evening, we will have a scoreboard show Wednesday evening here on WJBC as far as the time. Who knows? But, you know, I always like to extend my workload a little bit. Chip, you're up on the scoreboard show. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I'm doing great. ISU wins 77-62. Boy, life just doesn't get any better than this. I sound like a beer commercial now. Always take a big win against the big time. Hey, it, this really helps out. This probably helps our, huge, our recruiting just big time. Oh, I sure hope so, because, you know, the last year we had a good recruiting class. I think it was, what, top 30 in the country, was it? Yeah, uh, that might be true. I don't. I it don't know. Uh, Hill and Cartmill, and that was exciting. And uh, yet, like you said, this could only help the recruiting. Mm -hmm. And I want to make a comment. Uh, you know, a lot of callers have been calling in about the crowd. Yeah. You no. Know, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm so tired of hearing about it. Um, we'll just start concentrating on 8,000 people that show up there every night, and stop worrying about the other 2,500 that don't. You know. Mm -hmm. And it's like. Uh, 8,000 we have there, it's a good crowd, usually making some noise, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, the crowd has gotten 
really uh, progressively better throughout the year. First of the season, you know, they're kind of quiet, sitting on the hands, but then all of a sudden, as the team got hot, so did the crowd. The crowd was really rooting them on, and that it, it coincided with one of the, another. Each uh, helped out the other, you know? It sure did, and I think, uh, you know, being a student here, it's my senior year, and like the caller before, I think Bradley, uh, he was saying how he's been there four years, and me too, and I, you know, I'm out there every game, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the Red Rage fan club, you know, it doubled from last year when I was a member. We had about, about 65 members, and this year we had about 130 members. Which, mm -hmm. You know, that's a little bit of improvement. Hopefully next year, you know, we can build up the excitement of this year. Hopefully it won't end uh, Wednesday night, well, and you never know. Well, what does it take, though, to get those guys, uh, in regards to the other students, what does it take to get them standing outside waiting in line to get into the game? Well, I think we need to get a uh, top 25 uh why does it have to be top 25, though? That's such you know, a bogus that is, excuse. I agree with you 100%. It shouldn't take a top 25 team. And like you, you commented earlier about it, only Braley and uh, so uh, that's a problem. Yeah. But what are you going to do, you know? Yeah, you, you d play with the cards you're dealt. Let's, you know, focus on the 8,000. They're doing great. And the nine buses that went up to uh, Madison tonight. Yeah, group, I would have loved to have gone. <laughs> I'm sure you would have. I would have loved to have gone. Yeah, but, hey, we got to hear a great game. Dick Lucky did a fantastic job calling the game tonight. Did. I tell you, I was on the edge of the seat like that uh, Blackhawk thing. Uh, <laughs> give me the full seat. You're only going to need the edge. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, Chip, we'll, we'll talk to you Wednesday night, all right? All right. Take it easy. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Oh, man, feeling great, as I'm sure you are as well. Well, that's the truth. I think that it's the first time in a long time we can say that Illinois State is the uh, best basketball team in Illinois. Hey, there you go. I think uh, yeah, they might just have moved past by Bradley. Yeah, and uh, not only that, but moved past the University of Illinois, too. Well, <laughs> I, th I thought Bradley was better than Illinois at the end of the season, didn't you? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but the truth is that Illinois was one of the worst teams that they've had in years. Well, that, and, and there's talent there, too. That's the that's the frustrating thing about it, even if you are not an Illinois fan, but to see them doing that way, just kind of clogging along with that kind of talent. Well, the, we don't get the big names out of uh, Illinois, even. So mm -hmm. I'm supposed to get the big names out of the nation. Yeah, well, you know, ISU's doing great right now, and Bradley may be looking for a new head coach soon. Do we hope that? Well, if... Uh, Molinari goes to U of I. No, it goes to St. John's. Well, oh yeah. No, he's not getting the line. I think he's not going to get the U of I job. Well, That's I too small time. About that. What's that? I heard something about him. He was well. He's a candidate, yeah. but it sounds like everybody and their brother's been a candidate yeah. for that job this year. Yeah, that's probably the truth. So, but you know, Kevin Stallings is doing fantastic work here. His stock is rising, but that's fine by me. You know, hey, keep building this program to what? Keep well, doing a good job, and these kids to just keep fighting and fighting, and they are finally playing. Uh, they're they're standing up to the physical play. I mean, the Wisconsin had a much bigger front line than we have. And we out-rebounded them by eight, for crying out loud. Well, that's let's, outstanding. Well, let's just hope that Stallings doesn't leave until he does what he came here to do, and that's what give us some respect. A national title? Not, no, not, not a national, national title. title. I'll take the Sweet 16. Oh, okay. And if he gets us to the Sweet 16, or, you know, even a good tournament win. And I think that's his job, and then he can move on to one of the major programs. I, I tell you what, in a few years, that'll be uh, that'll be something worth, definitely worth thinking about. And it well, could be worth thinking about next year. Seeing that I'll probably be here for a few more years, I might be around. To ah, see. you're on the seven-year plan there, huh, uh, Brian? Well, whatever it takes. That a boy. That's ISU. All right. Well, <laughs> All right. Go Red there you go. We'll see. If it's a home game, you'll be out there Wednesday night. That's right. All right, man. Talk to you later. All right, take it easy. Bye bye. That's going to do it for the scoreboard show. I'm Craig Birchie. Thanks so much for joining me. Yes, we will have at least one more scoreboard show the birds in Tulane Wednesday night where we don't know yet but we will keep you posted on that birds arriving here in town at about 11 o'clock out of Bloomington Normal Airport let's get a big contingent out there to greet them welcome them back home after a hard fought 77-62 win over Wisconsin I'm Craig Birchie thanking you for joining me vote tomorrow we'll talk to you tomorrow evening here on WJBC have a great one AM 1230 WJBC you've been listening to the scoreboard show with Craig Birchie brought to you by Denison used car center by schooners by Denison Toyota and by Don and Doug Sutton your Remax Twin City Realtors the scoreboard show is heard exclusively on the ISU sports flagship AM 1230 WJBC.
WJBC News. Good evening. I'm Howard Packowitz reporting. At 1034, it's 36 degrees. Bloomington's last-minute decision to change how it will fund the proposed Expo Center has the town of Normal rethinking the details of its funding plan. Allison Kellstrom has the story. Bloomington's decision to pay for its portion through a sales tax increase has prompted the Normal Town Council to delay its already approved two and a half cent increase in its hotel motel tax. Normal City Manager Dave Anderson. We have not decided at this point um, in, in, in any discussion with